everything I have and everything I am is yours. Welcome to Ms. Mojo. And today we're counting down our picks for the top 22 heartwarming TV moments of each year, 2000 to 2021. I'm not crying. I'm crying a little. I'm crying a little, but not blubbering. That's what we meant when we said no crying. No blubbering. For this list, we're looking at those small screen moments that gave us the warm and fuzzies from each year of the century so far. We'll be leaving out animated moments, since those could have a list all their own. If we missed any moments that made your heart swell with joy, let us know in the comments below. 2000. Turkey Soldier. The West Wing. The West Wing has given us an odd amount of funny and sweet moments with animals. There's season 4's goat photo op, but for our first entry on this list, we had to go with the turkey pardon to end all pardons. By the power vested in me by the Constitution of the United States, I hereby pardon you. Okay. No, it's not okay. Sir? Morton, I can't pardon a turkey. When CJ is tasked with choosing which turkey will receive the traditional presidential pardon and which will go on the chopping block for Thanksgiving dinner, she can't decide. She desperately tries to save both turkeys, but it's not looking good. Just buy the second turkey. They already sold it. And there's not much I can do. You can pardon the turkey. The turkey hasn't committed a crime. Sir. CJ, I have really no judicial jurisdiction over birds. Then, just in time, President Bartlett drafts the non-pardoned turkey into the armed forces so his life will be spared. A Thanksgiving miracle. I'm going to step out there and begin the singing and lute playing. Whatever. 2001. Thunderbirds. Spaced. Just when you thought all was lost, the Thunderbirds theme song saves the day. Oh, are you a man or a mouse? <laughs> the short-lived British sitcom Spaced has become a beloved classic for some, and has one of the sweetest moments of all time in its series finale. The episode opens to sadness. Twist has broken up with Brian, and he's utterly heartbroken, unable to bring himself up from the pits of despair. His friend Mike breaks into his house and does the one thing he knows will cheer Brian up. Play the Thunderbirds theme song. I'm a man. Come on, let's roll. It completely changes Brian's mood, and the tone of the episode lifts up into one of happiness from then on. Good work today, soldier. Thanks, sir. 2002, Rachel Gives Birth, Friends. Oh my God, she's amazing. Oh, oh, I'm so glad you guys got drunk and had sex. <laughs> Over the course of its 10 year run, Friends gave us more than enough heartwarming moments to probably fill out a list all on its own. But today, we had to go with the tender moments between the friends when Rachel gives birth to her and Ross's daughter, Emma. Oh, she's, oh. she's perfect. Oh, wow. Oh. oh, she's so tiny. There are plenty of amazing little exchanges here, but our favorite is when, before Ross and Rachel have picked out a name, the nurse calls the newborn baby girl green. They may not be settled on a first name yet, but Rachel corrects her about the last one. Oh no, baby girl killer green. Ross and Rachel kiss, and while things still might be complicated, it is a beautiful moment. 2003, Rory's valedictorian speech, Gilmore Girls. But my ultimate inspiration comes from my best friend, the dazzling woman from whom I received my name and my life's blood, Lorelai Gilmore. The relationship between Rory and her mother Lorelai on Gilmore Girls is a mother-daughter relationship for the ages. It wasn't always perfect, but there is no doubt that the love between the two was strong. So when Rory thanked her mother during her valedictorian speech when she graduated from Chilton, you can bet there were some waterworks. So we're not crying. Not crying. Not crying. Not crying. Not crying. What? No crying. Rory, who has recently decided to go to Yale, gets up in front of her whole school and begins thanking a few people who have helped her get to where she is. Though, like Lorelai and Suki, we desperately tried not to blubber, there is no chance we weren't blubbering when Rory talked about how supportive 
inspirational and loving Lorelai had been for her entire life. She filled our house with love and fun and books and music, unflagging in her efforts to give me role models from Jane Austen to Eudora Welty to Patti Smith. As she guided me through these incredible 18 years, I don't know if she ever realized that the person I most wanted to be was her. 2004, Charlotte meets her daughter, Sex and the City. Charlotte's struggle with getting pregnant was one of the series' more heart-wrenching storylines throughout the years. Blood and mucus tests show extremely elevated anti-sperm antibodies. Is that bad? It just means it's going to be that much more difficult for you to conceive naturally. How much more difficult? I'd give it a 15% shot. When Charlotte and Harry got married in season six, though, audiences were happy to know that at least Charlotte got the man of her dreams. But in the series finale, we got hit with this tear-jerking, heartwarming moment. Hi, honey. I'm a bad wife. I ordered Chinese. I got something from China, too. Charlotte and Harry have decided that they want to adopt. And one night, Harry comes home with a photo of their new daughter. He turns the picture to Charlotte, and the look on her face says it all. She immediately starts tearing up, and in a touching moment, says, That's her baby. I know it. That's really our baby. 2005, Mother and Child, Doctor Who. I am your mummy. I will always be your mummy. I'm so sorry. Never underestimate the bond between parent and child. It might just save the world. In The Doctor Dances, the Doctor, Rose, Jack, and another companion, a homeless woman named Nancy, are investigating some strange epidemic in 1941 that's caused patients at a nearby hospital to turn into zombies with gas masks for faces. The zombies are led by a strange child named Jamie, who is searching for his mummy. Are you my mummy? It becomes clear to the doctor that the mummy in question is Nancy, who isn't actually Jamie's sister. In an emotionally charged moment, she tells Jamie that she's his mother, and that is all it takes. What happened? The nanogenes recognized the superior information, the parent DNA. They didn't change you because you changed them. <laughs> mother knows best. 2006, Lee Adama loves Kara Thrace, Battlestar Galactica. The relationship between Lee, Apollo, Adama, and Kara Starbuck Thrace in Battlestar Galactica kept audiences on their toes for years. Will they? Won't they? Did they already? Where are we going with this, Lee? Well, now that's the question, isn't it? Where are we going? Well, some of those questions were answered in season three. The audience is treated to a flashback of a moment between Kara and Lee, where they slept together outside underneath the stars. Afterwards, they talk about the future, and Lee stands up and screams his love for Kara to the heavens. Eventually, she joins in and does the same. Okay. Kara! <laughs> Kara Thrace loves Lee Adama! <laughs> it's a beautiful, funny, and heartwarming moment for these two, and one that was a long time coming. 2007. Jim asks Pam out, The Office. For years, Jim and Pam danced around their feelings for each other on The Office. We just, we never got the timing right. You know, I shot him down and then he did the same to me and... It seemed like they might never figure things out until the end of season three. Jim is in the running for a corporate job in New York, along with Karen, his girlfriend. But Jim seems confused, both about Karen and the job. At the end of the episode, just as Pam confesses that she doesn't think that she and Jim will work out, he immediately appears and asks her on a date. Um, are you free for dinner tonight? Yes. All right, then it's a date. Pam's smile after he leaves is infectious, and her adorable admission that she's forgotten what she was talking about is one for the books. I'm sorry, what was the question? 2008, Desmond and Penny, Lost. Lost loved to play with time. Seems like there was always a paradox or time travel of some kind or another going on at any given moment. But one of the best and most beautiful uses of that conceit came in season four. Des, are you still there? Yes, yes, I'm here. I'm still here, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, that's better. I love you, Penny. 
I've always loved you. During the episode, Desmond becomes unstuck in time and keeps believing that he's not in 2004, but 1996. To become unstuck, Desmond must find a constant. He decides that will be Penny, but there's a problem. In 1996, they broke up, leaving her distraught. And in 2004, he's stuck on a freighter, and Penny is not. Conundrum! But Desmond is able to get a hold of Penny on the freighter's phone. Oh my god, Penny, is that really you? Yeah. <laughs> yes, it's me. You believe me? The contact stops his time loop and re cements his love with Penny. I don't know where I am, but. I'll find you, Des. I promise. No matter what. I'll come back to you. I won't give up. I promise. I promise. I, I love, love you. you. 2009. Nathan goes to the NBA. One Tree Hill. What do you say, Haley James? Want to take the boy to Charlotte? Maybe we could see a basketball game. While Nathan started off as something of an antagonist in the early seasons of One Tree Hill, he quickly became a fan favorite and someone to root for. In the later seasons of the show, Nathan's dream was to join the NBA, and fans definitely wanted it for him. While Nathan worked hard, a number of obstacles kept getting in his way and setting him back, and it seemed like it might never happen. But at the end of the sixth season, the big dream finally becomes reality. You're in the NBA? I'm in the NBA. <laughs> oh. Thank you. Thank you for believing in me, Haley. Nathan finds out that he's gotten called up to the NBA, and he and his family celebrate. The look on his son Jamie's face is enough to make this a perfect heartwarming moment. I knew you could do it! <laughs> oh, yes. You're gonna kill him for you. Yes. Yes. 2010, Barney meets his daughter, How I Met Your Mother. Barney Stinson is the philandering ladies' man of the group on How I Met Your Mother. And you know, the stats, they really speak for themselves. Over 200 women spanning six continents, 17 nationalities, 74 sexual positions. While Barney has a good run with Robin, it never seemed that he would really settle down with one girl. But in the end, he did, although it might not have been the girl we expected. In the series finale, Barney finds out that he got a woman pregnant, and she's having a baby. Jim Thank goodness. You're always here for me in times of trouble. What should I do? You're on your own this time, bro. Congratulations, Papa. When he finally meets his baby daughter, he breaks down and begins crying. You are the love of my life. He tells her, filling himself and us with unparalleled emotion. 2011. Hail Mary, Friday Night Lights. Friday Night Lights was such a crowd-pleaser of a show, it's no wonder the series finale had a plethora of moments that made us tear up. But this one moment got us the most. And here we go, ladies and gentlemen, Vince Howard to the line. If the dream is gonna happen, it has to happen right now. This is for everything. Vince Howard was a bit of a complicated character. He could be arrogant and cruel sometimes, but throughout the series, he proved himself to be a great guy and a true leader for the football team. You may never know how proud I am of you. It changed my life, Coach. In the final episode, Vince hurls a Hail Mary pass down the field. The camera tracks to spectators as the football continues to travel, and then it cuts away, leaving us to wonder what happened. But we are quickly shown that Vince succeeded, he won the game, and he won our hearts. Find you shelter from the storm. Good, good. 2012, Leslie wins, Parks and Recreation. Any loyal Parks and Rec fan knows that Leslie winning the city council election is one of the best moments in the show's history. There you are, thank God. We're gonna get the final results any minute. I know. After a fierce and often hilarious race against Paul Rudd's amazingly idiotic Bobby Newport, Leslie is waiting for the results of an extremely close race. Ben is trying to keep her mind off things when Anne walks in with the news from the recount. And it's good. It's still 21 votes. But you won. You won, Leslie. You won by 21 votes. The slow, surprised smile that spreads across Leslie's face is worth all the anxious waiting. 
it may be a win by just 21 votes, but it is still a win. The idea behind this campaign was a simple one. That with hard work and positivity, a group of people can make a difference. 2013, Dwight's wedding, The Office. When Michael left The Office, audiences were devastated, but also left with questions. Would we see Michael again? And how long would it take before he made an appearance? They say on your deathbed, you never wish you spent more time at The Office, but I will. Audiences finally got the answer to that question in the series finale at Dwight and Angela's wedding. Right before the nuptials are set to begin, Jim tells Dwight that he can't be his best man. You know what? The minister just told me that it's tradition for the bestish mensch to be older than the groom. Oh, come on. I've never heard of such a thing. I haven't heard of it, obviously. Little does Dwight know, Jim has one last prank up his sleeve. Dwight turns around to see that Michael is back, and he's willing to stand with him. Michael. That's what she said. It's a tear-jerking moment, and even includes one more great use of That's What She Said. Best prank ever. 2014, Jay walks Mitch down the aisle. Modern Family. You can't get married like this. You two deserve the kind of wedding you've been talking about nonstop for the last nine months. Mitch's coming out story with his dad, Jay, was never an easy one. In season one of Modern Family, he makes it known that he couldn't even attempt the conversation until his 20s and he had to essentially come out to his dad three separate times when he finally did. I'm not sure if maybe he was hoping he heard it wrong, like I had said, Dad, I'm gray. Years later, and his wedding to his longtime partner Cam isn't going any smoother. But it becomes the perfect, most heartwarming event imaginable when Jay offers to walk Mitch down the aisle. Take your seat, Dad, we're about to start. Actually, I thought you and I would take a little walk. Mitch is visibly touched, and gently rests his head on his father's shoulder as they walk down the aisle together. Tissues, please. 2015, the importance of Glee Club. Glee. You know, a great big fat person once stood on this stage and told a group of dozen or so nerds in hideous disco outfits that Glee, by its very definition, is about opening yourself up to joy. Sue Sylvester always had a, let's say, complicated relationship with Will Schuster and the rest of the Glee Club. Sometimes it seemed she was on their side, like when she got the Glee Club another year at the end of season one. But most of the time, she seemed dead set on destroying them. For me, the real joy of Christmas was breaking the collective heart of the Glee Club. Which is why it was so touching when at the end of the series, Sue dedicated the auditorium to Finn and gave a moving, heartfelt speech that showed she finally understood the importance of Glee Club. It takes a lot of bravery to look around you and see the world not as it is, but as it should be. A world where the quarterback becomes best friends with the gay kid, and the girl with the big nose ends up on Broadway. And she's right. Glee is about opening your heart to joy. 2016, Schmidt and Cece, New Girl. There have been plenty of beautifully moving television weddings in the 2010s, so we had a lot to choose from. Yo, Michael. We could have gone with Michael's adorable use of Spanish in his vows with Jane on Jane the Virgin, but we had another wedding in mind. You want to get married? I don't think that I can wait another second. Ever since Schmidt and Cece met on New Girl, they've been on and off, together and not together, dancing around each other the whole time. So when they finally got married in season five, it was a wedding for the ages. For the first time, I see what the rest of my life looks like. Even if it wasn't what the two initially expected and took place in the gang's apartment, it was just perfect. 2017, Family Game Night, Brooklyn Nine-Nine. When Rosa decided to come out to her parents as bisexual in the fifth season of Brooklyn Nine-Nine, things didn't go as well as she hoped. Your worst fears are real. I'm not straight, I'm bisexual. And I don't care what you think about it. Screw this, I'm out of here. After an awkward dinner with her parents and Jake, her parents then call her sexuality, quote, a phase, which maddens Rosa, understandably. At the end of the episode, her father Oscar tells her that he loves her, but it might take her mother Julia a little more time to accept her. Oof. Guess family game night's gonna be kinda weird. 
you know what I mean, that maybe we better put game night on hold for a little while. Okay. To try and cheer her up, the 9-9 gang throws Rosa a game night and decides to make it a weekly event. Sometimes, your chosen family is all you need. Every time someone steps up and says who they are, the world becomes a better, more interesting place. So, thank you. 2018, Ted surprises Alexis at Singles Week, Schitt's Creek. Schitt's Creek might take the cake for being one of the most heartwarming and happy shows in the past couple of decades. But for us, one moment stands out above the rest. Hi. Apparently I only have two minutes, so I'm gonna make this quick. In this episode, Alexis is desperately trying to organize a singles week and trying to ignore her feelings for her ex, Ted, but nothing is going as planned. I'm on my way. We've just encountered a bit of a roadblock, a, a holdup, a minor issue. Okay, you literally had one job to do. Jocelyn is in labor. Oh my God. I know, it's no one's fault. However, things start looking up during a game of singles musical chairs. Ted shows up to the event and sits in the chair across from Alexis, newly single and ready to mingle with one particular person, her. And I'd be kidding myself if I told you that I haven't wanted to do this every single day for the last two years. Do what? It was definitely a moment that made our hearts feel all a flutter. 2019 Nobel Prize speech, The Big Bang Theory. Sheldon may have not always been the most likable character on The Big Bang Theory, but we got used to his quirks and began to love him as the series went on. However, we definitely got a little taste of the old Sheldon in the series finale, if only for a moment. What about all these pages calling out everyone who said you wouldn't succeed? I told them all they would rue the day. How is it gonna make me look if the day finally comes and they're not filled with rue? Having won the Nobel Prize with Amy, Sheldon steps up to the podium with a very long, very self-centered speech in hand. But he ultimately decides not to deliver that speech. Because this honor doesn't just belong to me. I wouldn't be up here if it weren't for some very important people in my life. Instead, he thanks his friends and family and rightly says that he wouldn't be where he is without them. Watching Sheldon grow over the course of the series was without a doubt one of our favorite things. I apologize if I haven't been the friend you deserve, but I want you to know in my way, I love you all. 2020, Roy Kent, Ted Lasso. Ted Lasso took the world by storm in 2020, garnering praise for its loving characters and its everlasting optimism. But one character stood out a bit from the rest. Audiences everywhere loved Roy Kent, the crotchety, grumpy veteran footballer with a heart of gold. I do yoga with a group of women in their 60s. They have no idea who I am. It's twice a week and it's really good for my core. Normally only takes an hour, but Maureen's just been going for a divorce and she needed to talk about it and blow off some steam. We all ended up at GAY till 2 a.m. and then we had crepes in Balham's with some drag queens. And not just TV audiences, but the show's football audience too. During the first season's final match, Roy gets hurt during a play and has to be helped off the field. As he leaves, the crowd erupts into this rapturous cheer. It's a lovely send-off for Roy, and a truly heartwarming moment. Kent has been a fan favorite because he always left everything he had out on the pitch, and he did so tonight. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. 2021. What is grief? WandaVision. Wanda, I don't presume to know what you're feeling, but I would like to know, should you wish to tell me, should that be of some comfort to you? Setting the tone for the MCU's new host of Marvel television shows couldn't have been an easy task, but WandaVision was more than up for the job. There were many things to love about the miniseries, but the best might have been the relationship between Wanda and Vision themselves. Don't mean to intrude. You don't? 
Well, I suppose, yes, I did intend to come in here. We didn't get to see a ton of them together in the films, so it was nice to not only see their love on WandaVision, but also their love story leading up to it. The best moment by far was a flashback of Vision comforting Wanda in the wake of her brother's death, where he uttered this lovely sentiment. What is grief? If not love, persevering. It is a beautiful, moving moment for the books. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.